Corey, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure and an honor to meet you. Oh, it's all good, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Slipknot is just uh, going nuts, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it's, I, I didn't expect it to last this long, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's doing really well. So. <laughs> I, I hear that you have a new album coming out uh, pretty soon. Yeah, I just finished the vocals for it uh, last week, actually. Um, we've been debuting new stuff kind of here and there in the in the shows. And uh, now we're just it's just a matter of time. We're going to try and get it out, I think, by summer, sometime like that, or maybe in the next three or four months. Um, but it's really good. Like, I'm, I'm really stoked on it. I guess, uh, you know, this pandemic has has been a real problem in performing and touring. It's been interesting. You know, I mean, it's made you have to scramble like I, that was. For me, it was it was it was an opportunity for me to release my my solo album and kind of uh, take advantage of that time and kind of promote that and do little things here and there. Um, but with Slipknot, it allowed us to write a lot of new music. Um, it allowed us to kind of try and uh, capitalize on the downtime and 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 get more into the creative than just the grind. I I was one of those people that. I love the fact that we were taking a break, man, because <laughs> I mean, I was doing back to back everything for the last 15 years. Like it's been it's been a grind, you know, so this was actually good for me. I actually got to hang out with the kids, uh, spend some time with my with my wife, my family and uh, just kind of be a homebody for a second. And then obviously I got bored after about two months. and I was like, OK, I got to get back into something like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's like you know. I grew up with, uh, uh, went to high school with Tommy Lee and and uh, Motley Crue. Oh, okay. Known Alice Cooper forever, uh, and you know these guys just want to go home. <laughs> they just, they just want to spend some time with them, get to know the family again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I I'm empathetic. Uh, the new film Rucker is um, now. You play Taco Tuesday, a, tr a truck driver. Yeah, uh, yeah. Was is it a meaty role? Do you did you like him? Ah, uh, he was cool. You know. I mean, like me, he had some anger issues. You know, that's how he got his name. You know, I mean, but that was kind of the cool thing. You know, the great thing about this movie is that it's kind of multi-layered in a weird way. You know, like there are a lot of dimensions to it that I, I wasn't expecting from such a small production. You know, so and but that kind of plays into it as well because it's a small production. It's very character-based. You know, so uh, Rucker, the 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 main character has a lot of dimensions to him that you didn't expect from something like this, where you could take it campy or you could take it very dire. And I think they kind of ran the line because with my character and some of his other friends, there are definitely moments of levity that allow the darker moments to pop a little harder, you know? So for me, it was, it was cool to be able to play this weird quirky truck driver and, you know, kind of use a little bit of, my background because I mean, I grew up with truck drivers and bikers. So I know the I know the culture um, and, and the script, there's, there's a very specific theme about uh, fathers and daughters, which is something I know a lot about, you know? So I was able to kind of take that and just kind of do my thing. I think independent films, you, you, you really do get a better truth because in the in the big budget films, which you've been a part of, you've always got somebody in a suit coming down. So can we change that line? Or we've got we've got this product placement to deal with. And it it dilutes the message in movies sometimes. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I, and I think that's one of the reasons why I enjoy the smaller ones more, because it really is. It, it is more hands on with the people who are creating it and less about that kind of outside, like you said, that corporate hand coming in going, wait, wait, we're going to manipulate this and kind of turn it into whatever it is, you know? Um, and that's, you know, and sometimes that's good. And obviously you want that structure for some of the bigger, you know, kind of blockbuster movies. But when it comes to stuff like this, which is very much almost like a, uh, uh, a mellow play, it, it works so much more and it, it, make, it makes it feel more intimate. It makes it feel a little more personal. And to me, that's where it really kind of tugs on it. As a musician, though, in your heart of hearts, do you hear rhythms and cadences in the in the characters that you play? Is that part of how you get prepared for a film? It's definitely how I memorize the lines and whatnot, you know, and obviously and I'm I'm one of those guys who because I'm not an actor, I tend to be I really try to stick to the page and then only really 
you know, kind of come off of that if the people in the uh, ensemble are comfortable with it, you know? Uh, so I try to find the rhythm of it and I, I try to apply my own speech rhythms to it because I, I know everybody has a different way of saying everything, uh, and whether it's enunciation or just the fact that, you know, whether it's your, your drawl or your accent or everything. So I, I try to find myself in it and that helps me memorize it, you know, because I mean, obviously being a lyricist, I'm a stickler for it. And I, I just try to make sure that it, it's given in a way that is believable. It doesn't feel mechanical, um, but at the same time is delivered with some sort of passion that maybe I mean and the writer means. In our final moments we have, and I want to thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy, busy guy. Um, what do you think audiences are going to take away from Wrecker? Uh, you know, I mean, the, the great thing about this is, I mean, the horror audience is very, very open-minded, you know, I mean, there's so many different subgenres inside this genre. And in a lot of ways, it's a lot like music. It's a lot like heavy metal. There's so many slivers in this rainbow of a genre that a lot of different people who are fans of different parts of these genres will find a lot of different stuff. There's great gore. There's great tension. Uh, to me, there's great acting. It's shot really well. Uh, it's paced really well. So I think there's a lot for, for people to really kind of get into. You know, it's a movie that doesn't try to force itself on people. It's, it's easy to watch. And it's, and it's cool because I think everybody can find something to relate to with at least one person in it, you know? So I think it's just something that people will watch and be like, that was really, really cool. You know, it's, it's not trying to change the world it's just trying to tell one of the stories in it or it is an absolute pleasure as i said uh, to finally catch up and meet with you you are uh, just an amazing lyricist a wonderful singer and i enjoy your acting it's you're not you're not an amateur actor you're a good actor <laughs> i listen i do my best all right i'm not going to hang the other stuff up but as long as i can get away with it you know we'll, we'll give it a shot you know you earned that sag after card you you did indeed so you take care and have a wonderful day. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.